Hello and welcome. If you're new to my channel, my name is Christina. And in today's video, I'm excited to share five DIY projects with you. Easy, simple, and inexpensive. I'm gonna walk you through all the materials and the techniques. Lots to cover, so let's head over to project one. I wanted to try something I haven't tried before, just using a bowl, some jute rope, saran wrap, some twine, as well as some embroidery threads in different colors. This technique is actually inspired by a Navajo Indian type of homemade textured art. I'm just using the saran wrap, so this way it will protect the bowl, and we're just using it as a skeleton for the bowl we're gonna use with the jute rope. First thing I'd like to do with a tiny little bit of the hot glue, I want to secure just a little bit of the butcher white twine at each end of the jute rope. Now what I've done is actually cut sections of about three to four feet of the jute rope. And you're gonna see in just a moment why I did that. Once I got to the very end, I would coil the string a little bit, add a little tiny, tiny bit of the hot glue. Now, just for decoration, I'm gonna add in a little bit of this butcher white twine just around the rope a little bit. And with the embroidery thread, I would like to add some elements of color just by coiling the thread around in random around the jute rope. No specific pattern at all. Again, just using some random colors, some light green, dark green, a little bit of orange, a little bit of brown. You can pick any color, style, or format you want, but I wanted to try something very simple as I've never done this before, and I really love the look of this, and I thought there would be a really easy way of creating it versus crocheting or knitting it in. So I thought I would try this and share it with you to see how it goes. So once I've made all my colors onto the jute rope and I have all my sections ready, I'll show you why I cut the jute rope the way I did. I only added the hot glue for the string at the very beginning of the coil and at the very end, and again, very tiny, tiny amount. Now I'm gonna need a little bit more of the hot glue and I'm actually going to start the coiling, tying it very tightly to begin with, and then just circling the jute rope all the way around the bowl and using the bowl as the skeleton frame. I would add a little bit of the glue on every section I wrapped around into a circle and this would hold everything nice and secure together. The main reason I cut the jute rope into sections is I found it a lot easier to be able to coil the string by moving the jute rope around in a circle. If your rope is too long, it will start to bind up on each other and then everything starts to get tangled. So just a heads up, if you wanted to try this, that it's just a lot easier just to cut small sections of anywhere from two, maybe three feet of the jute rope then just make sure that the ends have a secure attachment with the twine and add it into your design. Once you attach the two ends together, because they're both coiled with the white twine, it actually just looks like it was twined that way and they were never cut to begin with. As I kept adding more rope, I just confirmed by lifting the whole jute rope bowl up every so often to make sure that the hot glue wasn't leaking in between and causing it to stick to the saran wrap. This was so easy, so inexpensive, and took no time at all to create this, and I'm really looking forward to making more very similar projects in the near future, as I love to make some basket wall art very similar with some other texture patterns with it. Once I was finished, I just went around and lightly grazed with some scissors just to make sure there was no loose ends on the jute.
I would like to show you how easy it is to dress up old picture frames using macrame cord. First thing I want to do is cut four strands to match each side of the picture frame. The first thing I want to do is make rows so I could use the Lark's head knot. So I'm going to cut for all sides enough of the macrame cord at about 14-15 millimeters in length and I'm going to cut enough that will line the diameter of the picture frame. And again, you could use a picture frame you already have or you could find one at the thrift shop. But here is a basic Lark's head knot. Pretty easy. You're just threading the tails through the loop, tying it nice and tight. The knot is actually on the other side, as you can see here. And you just want to make them nice and straight. I decided to go with about that 15 inches in length, so this way we can go ahead and use a square knot. And these are two very common, very basic, easy macrame design knots. Now I've completed the two sides that are longer in the picture frame, I'm going to finish the two sides that are shorter, and this picture frame is 9 inches by 6 inches. The process of making the Lark's Head Knot is super quick. This is a very quick, easy, fast project, and again, you can recycle an old frame to make this nice decorative finish. The one thing I want to do is make sure that at each corner it's going to line up, so that way when we adhere all four of them with the hot glue, you're going to use the flat side, not the knot side, to adhere each side of the frame with your macrame cord. Once I finished with the hot glue, I just cut off the little side ends so that way I could continue on with the adjacent side. Now I want to show you how to use the square knot and we're going to do a right side square knot and a left side square knot. Making a square knot is just practice. It's not hard, it's just some practice. You're going to use four strands of cord and just following exactly what you're seeing me do here. I overlap from the top and I come from underneath, leaving the two in the middle. You're basically making a, a tie, but it's coming from underneath the two middle cords. So that was the right side, now we're going to do the left side. So I'm going to start with the right side on the top, move the left side from the bottom, create the tie underneath, and as you can see, it's now a perfect square knot. I'm going to do this on all four corners to start and then I'm going to show you how I attach it as we go towards the middle. Again, this just takes practice. I know I spent quite a bit of time practicing these knots until I actually got it down. Once you get it, you're never going to forget it. A full square knot is always going to be using four squares. So that's all you're going to be doing to create this picture frame is you're always just going to be grabbing the next four cords. You're going to be following the exact same pattern that I showed you on the corners. You're going to start from the right and then work from your left. And that's just how the knot is. But don't worry if you want to do it the other way because if you're left-handed, it'll probably be more comfortable to reverse it. So as you can see, I have two and then I have two that are used. So each adjacent side is a used knot and the one in the middle is only the Lark's head knot but this is how I'm going to tie it together and it will come together and be cohesive. I wanted to make sure to demonstrate this because every picture frame size is going to be different so if you run into where you only have two and the two on the ends are going to be already used that's okay because what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be going into the middle of our previous square knots and making another square knot. You're basically creating a V with the already square knots you made on your first row. Not to worry again, if you fall into an area where your cord is too short, just use the adjacent one that's available. Your pattern will still turn out just fine. Once I was done with the second row of square knots, I just brushed it with a dog brush, but you can use any brush. I wanted to cut the remaining cord as well as even it all out and I was so happy with the results. The only thing I did find was with the corners there was still a little bit of a gap. 
So all I'm going to do here is create another lark's head knot. This created a knot head in between the square knots just to fill in the void so it turned out nice and cohesive. Continue to brush as well as trim. You may have to brush and trim a few times till it's nice and straight. Creating a horizontal terrarium, we're going to need a stand and using a one inch dowel, we're going to cut it so it's eight inches and we're going to round it out. Using an Ikea bottle for $2.99. My husband and I have wanted to make some terrariums for quite some time. So we needed to make the stand so it was circular so this way would balance. You're going to need some mesh. And they do have some atrium kits with everything that you need in but we bought them separately there is tropical mix just some random driftwood that we found as well as some moss outside we picked up a few little tropical plants some rocks so you're going to need this mesh it's a black mesh it's easy to find all of the supplies that I'm using will be in the description box below. Using a mesh net will keep the soil from mixing with the gravel. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put some gravel in there. It seems like it would be difficult as you have a very small opening but it actually goes along smoothly with just a couple of easy tools. We wanted to add a little bit of a color scheme, so using the very fine gravel, we're also going to be adding in a little bit of a white stone, and there's also even going to be a few gray stones as well. But you can pick up any stone colors that you see and that you like. This is where the black mesh comes in. So you're just going to place that on top before you add your soil. You're just going to add a little bit of soil in at a time and you're just going to shake the jar and you're also going to be using a dowel which we found super helpful just to level everything out. You don't want to flip the terrarium up onto a vertical angle. You always want to keep it horizontal. Now what we're going to do is we're going to place in our little succulents and plants and just using the dowel very lightly it goes in and this way you can manipulate the soil to equally pack around it just found some driftwood outside and we just cracked it a little bit so that way it would fit into the entry of the bottle home depot also carries these type of small little tropicals and a succulent we're also using these plastic tongs that we got from the dollar store which have been a little bit helpful as well and this way you can have a little bit more grip outside of what the dowel can do you can use all different colors there's such a variety of things that you could use once everything is placed you're now just going to add in just a tiny little bit of water that's it they actually don't need as it recycles its own moisture if you notice that it gets a little bit foggy just let the lid off let it air out for a few hours and then put it back on. I also wanted to quickly demonstrate how easy it is to make a terrarium that's also sitting up in the 
vertical. So just using a lot of the same supplies, some of the succulents and tropical plants. Again, use whatever you like. Go for a color theme. Add in some other little decals and maybe you even have particular rock colors you want to use. There's so many fun things that you could pick out to create your terrarium. And you could also use some of the things that you already have in your own garden or in a park. Making a terrarium with a smaller entryway can sometimes be a bit tricky, so here are some helpful tips. Using the black mesh, cut it in the shape of your terrarium. Now by folding it into four, and then you're just going to kind of coil it, drop it down, it should actually fan out. If it doesn't, you can use the tongs or you could use the dowel just to help straighten it. My husband thought by using some construction or some craft paper by making a funnel and this will help drop the soil into that small entry. Again, the mesh is there so that way the soil doesn't get mixed in with the rock and the gravel. We decided to drop in a couple of the drift wood pieces we found which are easy to break in size. We also found some natural moss just on a tree trunk out in the park so we're going to add in a little bit of that. If you have to break out the soil that the plant is in and the roots become exposed, not to worry, there's plenty of soil inside the terrarium that you can safely cover the roots back up. If this is one of the only ways you can get it through the small entry, not to worry, it works perfectly. We found the dowel to be most helpful to help secure it back up and safely pack in the soil. You only need a small amount of water and it safely hydrates everything. But if you're noticing that there's some condensation, not to worry, just open up the lid and let it air out a bit. With a little bit of jute rope, we decided to go ahead and cover the green lid to recycle that as well. And then that way we can keep everything safely and moisten. Using a Sweet Snuggles by Loops and Threads, this super chunky chenille yarn is fantastic. Not only is it washable, it's such a bulky yarn, it stitches up so well. I want to show you how easy it is to do a triple crochet. Don't be scared by the name triple crochet. We want to create a simple little slip knot. That is going to be your first stitch or loop. Now, you're going to use that working yarn in the hook of the crochet hook, and I'm using a 16 millimeter. You're just gonna grab the working yarn, pull through each loop, and now you're making your chain. For this particular throw, I am going to be chaining 50 of these. This blanket took me about three and a half to four hours, not in one sitting. It stitches up super fast, but I absolutely love triple crochet. I find it easier than single or double. How you're going to triple crochet is you're always going to hook on another loop of yarn. So I always have two looking stitches on my crochet hook. You're going to go to your first chain. Now you have three. This is how easy it is. You're going to chain one, then grab that working yarn again, chain two, grab the working yarn again, chain three. What you're wanting to do is create these posts. So next thing we want to do is go into the next chain over. You have three loops on your crochet hook. First thing you're going to do is chain one, chain two, and chain three. Always count when you're learning how to do a triple crochet because it's in basically chains of three. That is the only type of stitch you need to know for this entire throw blanket. Every time you're ready to do a stitch, always make sure that there's two loops on your crochet hook. Go into your stitch, and again, make sure you have three, 
you're going to chain one, two, three. Now that I'm at my last stitch of my original chain, one important rule that always goes with crocheting is making sure that you chain one, two for the triple crochet. Then you're going to flip your work around. With crochet, it's just important to do that to keep the symmetry at the side so it doesn't feel like it's shrinking. Now, we've created these posts with the triple crochet and that's now going to be where you're stitching into. So what we're doing is called a front post stitch. I'm doing a triple crochet into that front post that we first created. You want to do sections of three. So I'm going to do three stitches in those posts doing the triple crochet. Once your three front post stitches are done, you're going to turn your work and you're going to stitch your next post from the back doing the triple crochet. And you're going to do sections of three again. So the next three stitches I'm going to do are going to be from the back. Once you complete the three back posts, so you're stitching from the back of your work, you're going to flip the work back to the front and do three more front post stitches using the triple crochet. And that's the entire pattern of this whole throw blanket. It stitches up so quickly and this is so soft and the chenille bulk yarn will wash up no problem. Now that I'm at my last stitch, again, important rule at the end of each row when you're doing crochet is with triple crochet, you are going to make two, two extra stitches before you turn your work around. The vertical stitches you're seeing, those are front stitches and the horizontal is the back post. So now when you flip your work over, you're actually going to reverse the pattern and that's what's going to make this basket weave. So I want to give you a kind of a close up on everything that I'm doing, including the triple crochet. It's literally just repetitive. It's really relaxing to do and it's very easy. To attach two separate balls of yarn to continue on, just tie a knot and cut the edges and continue. It's really easy. When you're learning for the first time, it's always helpful to make a chain of 10 and just practice the pattern. Now I want to attach a new color. So I'm on my last stitch of this row with the white. What I'm going to do is before I make my two extra chains, I'm going to actually change the color. Each time you decide that you want to change the color of the yarn, it's good to pick the exact same spot. This way, the continuity of your pattern will look more cohesive. Closing a crocheted blanket at the top, really easy. Once you reach that last loop, you're just going to cut your working yarn, pull it through the loop, and you're going to tie it really tight. You could do this twice if you want to make an extra larger knot. You could weave in the tail or you can go ahead and cut that off, whichever you're more comfortable. Now for some extra textures, I am going to actually do a single crochet all the way around the blanket using the cream macrame cord. So you're going to see all the way around that there is two little loops. And this is just how the crochet pattern works. So those two little loops are going to be all the way around the, the blanket. Those two little hoops are what I am going to do my single crochet all the way around the blanket. Single crochet, really easy. You don't have to yarn over. You are just going to chain once, chain twice. Or as I say, you're going to loop once, loop twice. It's really simple. Where you're finding those two little loops at the sides of the blanket are going to be a little bit different just because it's a triple crochet. But if you feel for it, trust me, it's there. You'll, you'll have no problem doing your single crochet around it. Using the leftover from the picture frame of the 15 inch macrame cord, I just went ahead and made some additional tassels and four, one on each corner.
Thank you so much for watching today's video. And please, if you have any questions and or comments, leave me a comment in the comment box below. I love to read your comments. And I am so excited to share so many more DIYs, decorative finishes, furniture makeovers, and room and decor makeovers. So if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and notification bell. That's gonna tell you when I upload my next video. And until then, I'm really looking forward to seeing you soon. Take care.